Ryan, just two nights until Halloween night, and I'm getting afraid. I'm getting scared, nervous already. Not necessarily because Halloween is here, Ryan, but because the UConn women's basketball season is just around the corner, right? And although we start out with the first game that does not count, um, it's going to be very interesting because it's interesting because we have two of the top, arguably two of the top players on this roster already gone for the season. So I think I know we're going to get into some legendary basketball names, the most feared UConn players of all time. But just a side note, I think it's a little bit scary as I sit here with you tonight on this Saturday night, very late as the World Series just got over game two, right? I think it's scary because, man, already two players are gone for the season. It is. It is. It is really scary. And like you said, b- before the season even starts. So uh, it's a little scary because we don't really know what to expect out of them. And like you said, even though that first game doesn't count in terms of wins and losses and doesn't count towards the actual record for the regular season, it's going to be pretty important because we're going to find out what the lineup is going to be and, and how, how Gino plays all the players. And uh, I know I've seen something too as well. And I think somebody mentioned it in the comments and um, <clears throat> I actually did see the article the other day about AZ FUD and uh, the foot fracture and maybe her, her foot, she's still healing on that foot. She's been limited in practice some as just a precautionary. So We'll have to see how that plays out as well, but that's going to be another scary thing is if, if AZ FUD goes down at some point in the season or, or starts missing some games, that's another top-tier player, especially offensive weapon on this team that UConn could possibly be without. That's right. So everything, not to be negative, that's a whole other story. We don't like to be negative on this podcast, right? But Around this time of the year, if you know what I mean, things get very scary. So with that said, Ryan, you give me your top three, top five, whatever you have, most feared UConn women's basketball players in the history of this program. Yeah, well, I guess I kind of did a top five, and you can make it a lineup if you wanted, but uh, I'll give you five players. I'll start off with the point guard, Sue Bird arguably one of the goats of women's basketball in general bird such an impact we had an episode on her after she retired after this season of her WNBA career but such an impact on the game of basketball for so many women uh but in her time in stores huskies won 114 and 4 won two national championships UConn's all-time three-point percentage and free throw percentage leader 01 02 season named Naismith and AP player of the year. Uh, such a, a legendary player, legendary name known all around the world and, and throughout women's basketball. Uh, just legendary player and arguably another goat of women's basketball and, and Bird's counterpart at UConn for two seasons, Diana Tarasi, also on my list. True competitor, fiery, feisty competitor. Uh, very scary, as some might say, but uh, Tarasi, part of three national championship teams with her time at UConn as well. And and along with Sue Burr, those two had uh, some, some pretty good good times there at UConn and down in the stores. And I'm sure they're really, really fun to watch together. Uh, another guard on my list, the third guard, Maya Moore. I, I think she had such a great impact. She had such a uh, legendary WNBA career, much as... Uh, Diana Tarasi and Sue Bird also have had throughout their career. But Maya Moore, part of two national championship teams, won countless awards, much like Tarasi and Bird did uh, at her time in, in, at, at UConn. But uh, only woman, this is a really interesting stat, the only woman uh, throughout the Huskies basketball program to reach 3,000 points also holds the record for the highest scoring average and most made field goals. So Maya Morris, not in the league anymore, but uh, she did have a, a pretty good career, won a couple uh, now championships with the link, I believe. So, uh, yeah, th- those three guards for UConn, definitely really scary for the uh, UConn opponents there with, with their time at UConn. 
Uh, another player, I, I, I never really recognized his name. I'm probably uh, way too young, but uh, Carrie Bascom, the forward, she was All-American player at UConn. A big reason why it only took UConn four seasons to win the Big East with Gino as their coach. Uh, one of the, the first players Gino ever had, I believe, at UConn, but currently ranked eighth uh, in points and scoring average and uh, second all time with 18.1. So a uh, pretty legendary player, I'm sure. I, I didn't personally get to watch her play, but uh, I'm sure she was a big forward down there and uh, one of the, the best players that Gino had really early and kind of got uh, his teams going in the right direction. And last player on the list, Rebecca Lobo, her senior year, uh, won the first national championship for UConn ever in their program's history. Big reason why uh, they won it that year. Went 35-0. and 0. Uh, Naismith, AP Player of the Year that year in 1995. Such a legend, really recognizable name. She broadcasts now for ESPN. Love to watch her when she announces and uh, yeah, that that's my top five uh, lineup all time. Most feared players to ever play at UConn. Good job. You uh, did well on that list. I'll just go through with you the names of the, and you broke every player down very well. I appreciate that work. Uh, I'll just give you the names of a couple, maybe two, three that I have uh, the scariest players of all time. Um. Ryan, I will go ahead and go with Tina Charles, Ryan, and then we'll go ahead and get the comments on the last video because we all know that's our favorite part of the show. Um, I'll go Mariah Jefferson, Brianna Stewart, and uh, how about Katie Lou Samuelson? I'll go with her. And um, I'll tell you what, Crystal Dangerfield, and then, man, look. I know I told you before we went on this pod, I was like, well, some of our subs don't even want to hear the name anymore. And I, I res well, I kind of don't respect that, but yet I do because you got to try to focus without her in the game nowadays. And we understand that, um, you know, I'll be honest with you. Um, and it's not just because you and I started paying a lot of attention to women's basketball just recently because of this name, but it's just because, some of the plays that she's made, some of the times that uh, she has bailed out this team <clears throat> playoffs. Um, I'm just going to say it, Ryan. Uh, one of my most feared players of all time, and yes, I would be afraid to go up against her one-on-one -on, -one on the basketball court. And not saying I'm any good myself, Ryan, <laughs> but uh, that would be Paige Beckers, the guard, 2021 to the present. Um we know what she can do. She had her stellar freshman season, uh, is one for the ages in college basketball. You told me that she won all kinds of awards, broke all kinds of records. Uh, Paige Beckers, Ryan, uh, to me, in, in obviously in today's basketball world, uh, she deserves to be on the front cover, in my opinion, even though we had that season-ending injury, which I hate to even think about it on this on the uh, eve eve of Halloween, um, yeah, I just really think, hey, it's just Paige Beckers deserves to be on that headline, you know, on that <laughs> on the Time magazine, on the Halloween edition. Yeah, I like I like your list. I don't have a problem with that at all. I, I completely agree, and uh, especially you know to have a player from our generation and that we're currently watching it is important. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, Paige Beckers is one of a kind, uh, such a unique player. And hopefully she can, uh, you know, recover and be the player that she was her freshman year. And hopefully possibly even better uh, when she comes back for her junior and, and senior year. But uh, it's it's definitely going to be really interesting to see her progression and how she looks. And hopefully she can get back on the court next season. And and you have to imagine, I mean, I I I don't think that um other you you give your take on this. I don't think the uh opposition, the the opposing players, some of them, I don't think, or even the coaches, I don't think they will admit it, but just every now and then when they get uh in their game preparation routine, uh watching uh tape, watching highlights. Um, you, there's a difference between just you know why we came on this pod and getting in the Halloween spirit. There's a difference between just being good and actually being 
one of the most feared, you know, and I truly believe getting prepared for the list of names that you had and then the list that I had, and especially Paige Beckers, I really truly think not all head coaches and assistant coaches, whoever, you know, whoever does more of the game preparation, especially the players that have to face these uh, other girls that we just uh, talked about um, or, or women, that is. I don't think they're going to admit it to you in interviews, but I think at the end of the day, some of them, not all of them, but some of them, some of them every now and then, their nerves go up just a little bit more than normal just because most feared of all time. Yeah, I mean, and I bet NC State wishes that they were prepared a little bit better for Paige Beckers in that Elite Eight game because once a player like like that of her caliber gets going scary. I mean, what, what do you do? Mm -hmm. What do you do to stop mm -hmm. her? And that she's just going to keep shooting the ball, whether she makes it or misses it. And once she yeah. gets on a hot streak, th there's really no stopping her. And we've seen it, like you mentioned countless of times in her freshman year and last year as well. So it's yeah. just incredible to watch all these women play that, that we just listed. And uh, for us to be able to watch Paige Becker as a player of, of her caliber right now, um, you know, and, and hopefully uh, next year as well, if she can fully recover, it's just uh, it's just amazing. It is. Uh, how about uh, we go over some comments, Ryan, and then I'll let you get to bed uh, past midnight. So usually we're not on this late. We hope everyone has a great Halloween. Uh, how about this? Uh, how about this short comment? Paul Singer came through, Ryan. I haven't seen him in a while. How many girls Gino got going down in just practice? That's all he said. How many girls Gino got going down in just practice? Well, we can hope and pray that, that there's there's no more, uh, you know, to uh, to be uh, throughout the season. And hopefully yeah. there's there's no more to speak of. But so far, it's too, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, like I said, hopefully that there's no many, but there's, there's no more. But, uh, you know, I, I think the first game we're going to find out a lot. And, uh, you know, they're, they're just going to continue to practice hard. And uh, you, you just you really can't do anything to to prepare for injuries. And it, it just happens in a split second. It's just really, really unfortunate that both of the injuries are, are season ending. <laughs> Jason D'Amico goes, when did Paige Beckers become Voldemort? It's OK <laughs> to say her name. Laugh out loud. Amari DeBerry needing to step up is the understatement of the year. One of the uh, weak spots last year was a lack of consistent strong play in the paint in the finals. It killed them with no Paige Beckers, uh, with no Paige, and now UConn already making excuses for AZ with the injury to her foot not being fully healed and taken care of in the offseason. It is time for Amari to put her big girl pants on and start contributing, or this is going to be a long season. Side note, I like this, for especially this pod. Uh, for Halloween. Side note, which one of you is going to dress up as Paige for Halloween? <laughs> Laugh out loud. Peace, fellas. Well, unfortunately, none of us. That that would have been uh, really funny if one of us would have came on here as, as Paige Beckers. Uh, but maybe next year, maybe that, that can be an idea for next year. But uh, that that is a little concerning to me that they, they didn't really take care. It seems like they didn't take care of, of AZ FUD's foot throughout the off season. And, and to me, I, I don't really understand why it isn't fully, uh, she isn't really fully healthy, but um, yeah, I mean, Amari DeBerry and Albert Griffin, we haven't really talked about them a whole lot during the off season, mainly because they, they didn't, they didn't really play all, all of last season. Amari played maybe 20 minutes in, in the March madness last season towards the, those two, uh, two last games there but yeah I mean both of them Aubrey Griffin and Amari DeBerry haven't really gotten the opportunity to play that much so hopefully for this season this is the opportunity that you know they can use this to step up and, and show Gino and the rest of the team that uh, they're here to compete and they're here to play and uh, hopefully provide UConn with some will to to get some wins this season. Oh, uh, yeah, a couple more good ones, Ryan. Alan uh, Del Monte came through. This is so sad for this young lady. It appears she has a world of talent. As for Amari DeBerry, seriously, not a word about her. Another bust, a scholarship student who has shown very little so far, six feet, five inches of 
And then he puts a lot of question marks. I mean, um, uh, people have to stay patient. You know, I hate to say it, uh, but a lot, a lot of fans, and me being a true diehard fan of all sports, sometimes I'm even not uh, patient enough. Um, you know, sometimes I'm guilty. Sometimes Ryan is guilty. I'm sure you're guilty of that, Ryan, about your own teams. Um, patience is the key. You know, if you don't have that, especially with players who are supposed to be so well um, so groomed for the league, ready to come in and, and show off their talent. Sometimes it takes time, man, for, for them to come together um, and, and be the player that they're so, supposed to be. And if they never do, next lady up. Yeah. Yeah, and we talk, kind of talked about that before with the expectations of coming to UConn and all these these women that come here are kind of expected to just – you know, be, be the best player ever. And there's so many high expectations that, that we expect out of all these players, but every player is different. Some of them like Paige Beckers come in and set the world on fire and uh, win all these awards. And some, it might take a couple of years. And unfortunately for Amari, she gets injured last season and is unable to play until of course the very end of the season. So hopefully for this season, she's able to stay healthy along with Oliver Griffin and uh, for Amari, hopefully she uh, uses her size to her advantage. And UConn can definitely use that now with ice out for the season. So they can definitely use that depth. And hopefully she can provide some some good minutes, some good points, and also some good defensive stats for UConn this season. I'll be honest with you, Ryan. Uh, the talent that, that uh, as far as, for example, Amari DeBerry, the, the, uh, how excellent they are supposed to be. What I really take out of it, sit back as if you're a true uh, diehard UConn Huskies fan, sit back and just think to yourself, actually give, give the young ladies credit for it. So, Cause sometimes Ryan, it's not really their fault about how much playing time they're getting. Is it? You had to sometimes put that on the coaches and you know, just the way I look at it, give them credit for being so patient to get in the game. They could easily go back and talk to their, parents their coaches whoever and say hey i want to move on i want to i want to transfer because all of a sudden that's a new thing now right just like in professional sports you have so many trades now all we hear about is transfer portal but hey players like this man sit back and that's the way i look at it just thank goodness that they're still on your team because you know it could get very ugly very quick so hey they have patience to uh, again, they can't tell the head coach really what to do. I mean, uh, unless you're Paige Becker, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm just kidding, Ryan. But uh, no, I mean, you know, it's it, just give them credit for staying patient because again, you know, how many times, you know, especially with the mindset I have, you know, I'm like, well, Ryan, if if they're not going to give me playing time, guess what? I'm I'm requesting a. Uh, a trade or a transfer go i'm gonna hit the transfer portal ryan yeah and, and i respect players like that because not only do they have patience but they're they're waiting for their opportunity and now with amari fully healthy and some players injured for this season she's finally gonna to get the opportunity to show off her skills for this season and hopefully gino will give her some good minutes and she's able to practice hard and press gino and get in the game maybe even get some starts and, and, you know, provide UConn with a boost of energy for this season because they're, they're definitely going to need it. How about time for two more? Joseph Pilaro goes, Hey guys, did you see this excerpt from the uh, athletic article published yesterday? AZ still has a fractured foot. Your comments. FUD's foot is not healed. We're doing some things to help her uh, to help, excuse me, to help with the pain and I'm managing it. She says it's a problem that will be fixed after the season. Her mindset, however, is reset, end quote. Yeah, it definitely doesn't sound very good. I'm kind of disappointed when I when I read that some of that article. And like I said before, I'm not sure I, I really understand uh, that news at all because I, I just really don't understand why her foot isn't fully healthy. Um, but you know, hopefully it doesn't affect her too much. I mean, Caroline played with an injured back last season. So hopefully for AZ, she's able to make an impact and stay relatively healthy and not miss that many games. But 
you UConn can't afford to lose uh, any more players for this season, let alone a, a player like AZ Fudd, who is now expected to be one of the, the driving forces for UConn's offense this season. So if UConn starts to lose AZ Fudd for a couple of these games or for a lot of games this season, uh, that that's that's going to be really frustrating and really disappointing for a lot of us. How about Maids to uh, Yeah, you're talking, especially for me, huh? Because I was high on that player uh, going into this new season, and I I really thought that she could be one to step up right behind Dorka Juhas because it seems like to me I watched an interview. Dorka wants to be the leader of this team. Yeah. Say no more. Uh, we knew that was coming, right? Uh, Maidstone plant farm time for one more i really like this comment ryan because the first uh let's see one two three four the first four words of this comment caught my eye the other night as a former coach i can tell you that the top elite athletes are the most likely to have season ending injuries it's almost a barometer of a team's talent to see how many have serious injuries? The elite athlete practices harder, challenges their ligaments, and asks, uh, asks their body to do things that the human body isn't meant to do. UConn will be okay this season, even with Paige and Ice out. They will lose a few games along the way, but also surprise a few. Yeah, and that, that's a very good point. And I, I like that perspective about, you know, the, these top tier players giving it their all 110%, not only in the games, but in, at practice as well. So I can definitely understand that. But uh, I'm not really too sure if UConn is going to be okay. I think this is, especially with this AZ FUD news, I'm kind of uh, panicking a little bit now because if they lose AZ, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to be that, that really confident. Uh, I don't, I don't really know what you guys think, but that that's really, really concerning to me. So, uh, I, I mean, I, I know Gino and UConn will figure it out. They always have an answer for everything, but it's, uh, it's definitely going to be a challenge this season. They thought last year was a challenge. Uh, th this year is definitely going to be a whole nother challenge just this year. Well, it looks like to me if this continues, and we hope it slows down as far as the injury bug, if this continues, it looks like you and I will have to have uh, uh, more episodes, uh, a re re uh, remix is what I'll call it, a remix of episodes on the whole schedule prediction all over again, <laughs> right? I mean, because, heck, I mean, I still have UConn making March Madness, but, heck, Ryan, I mean, for uh, – God forbid. I mean, um, you know, some of these games that they have on the schedule. Oh, man. I mean, you just have to ask yourself, how do they even stay in them? You know, uh, so it's going to be like you said, it's going to be interesting. Um, but it, it holds a question of, man, does it just shatter your whole season prediction as far as because, I mean, we had we broke down game by game. Uh, leading up to this season and now you look back at them episodes and you're like oh man you know uh, even before Paige Beckers uh, was injured and you're just sitting back and you're like man did I just really say all this yeah well I think we already knew Paige Beckers was injured when we made those predictions, oh when we did but, okay all but right. we, I mean obviously we didn't know about ice and now with AZ so yeah. it's definitely concerning yeah. and and we've talked about how challenging their their non-conference schedule is with five or six opponents already ranked of course it's preseason rankings but yeah. they're ranked in the top 10 and i would expect most of those teams to stay top 10 top 15 range so it's definitely not going to be easy yes uh not going to be easy and i will leave it off uh there ryan and let you get some sleep we appreciate all your hard work on the pod and remember it is important to remember it is important to remember that we all have magic inside us. And especially, that was a quote from J.K. Rowling as far as Halloween goes. And we want to make sure everyone knows that, hey, UConn is full of magic. It needs to be even more magic, Ryan, for the 22-23 season. They can't use enough magic for this season coming up. Um, we can't wait. And then we all know that you can't wait. Have a safe and happy Halloween 2022. Ryan, trick or treat, bud, and I will see you Monday for another episode as we inch closer 
to the new season. Phil and Rye on Listen Up. Boo.